scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. By the way, let me deliver you once and for all if you are new in this place that there is no such thing as once saved, forever saved. Hello? Please hear me. I speak to you as the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I like you to throw that theology out of your mind. If one saved, forever saved, I like you to justify why Aquila and Priscilla died because they were part of the church. What happened to their salvation? Number two, explain to me the mystery of this man in the Bible called Demas. Have you read the story of a man called Demas in the Bible? Paul, the apostle, began to speak and was cautioning people against Demas. Demas, who used to be a faithful brother, who had now deviated from the faith. You can listen to my teaching in the apostate church. And so there are many believers who are on their way to hell and are convincing themselves that I remember in 1995, I think I can remember. You will see somebody in the beer parlor arguing as an elder of a church. He said, let Jesus come and you see whether I won't go. Her baptism and, I, and he believes that based on that, he has his baptismal certificate that he was immersed in water. He has a day. He has the counselor sleep. He even has records of foundation class and he's justified. That even Jesus Christ would admit me to heaven. What a shock. Mm. Hallelujah. What is idolatry in the context that I just used? Idolatry is the worship of other things other than God. Any other thing that is not God almighty is idolatry anything let me hurry up the last point number five now the issue with this nature is that it stops the believer from becoming a true lampstand and a written epistle across his territory of influence it can stop the believer from being a true lampstand the Bible says, ye are the light of the world. Is that true? Let me, let me finish the dictation. I know some of us are writing. It can stop the believer from becoming a true lampstand and a written epistle across his territory of influence. God has given every one of us territories of influence. But when you remain in this nature of carnality, it robs you of the opportunity of becoming a true lampstand. The Bible says, do everything without complaining or arguing. It says, so that you will be called blameless and pure. Children of the Lord, you know, without uh, perversion and this. It said that you will shine like stars as you hold forth the word of life. You see that? John said, I saw seven lampstands, and that talks about the Catholic Church, the perfect church, the universal church, the ecclesia of God. 
and they were all burning. None. You say you, you cannot light a candle and put it under a bush. The Bible says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. But the fire of the Holy Ghost is the fire that comes to light your candle. So that you can lift it and place it. And men can use your life as a reference. As a template of what godliness is. That when God wants to correct them, you will just use your face. Somebody wants to go to a beer parlor, he just sees a vision of you. God has spoken to him. The person just turns back and says, Kai, now wow. Just like God used Moses and Elijah to represent the law and the prophet, God wants to use our lives as spiritual yardsticks to define to people the scope of what true holiness is, what true righteousness is, what true love is, what true victory is. But he's largely not been able to go that far because we have not understood the system that helps us to partner with him. Is God helping someone tonight? Hallelujah. Write this word down, carnal. Let's discuss the word a bit. What does it mean to be carnal? To be carnal means to be sensual. S-E-N-S-U-A-L. To be sensual. Ruled by your senses. That means your activities are only coordinated by the impulses of your senses. A carnal man is one who is ruled by the factors. By factors and agencies other than the spirit of God. The carnal man is the man who is ruled by any other factor or agency that is outside of the spirit of God. It could be any other thing. Once you are not governed by the spirit of God, you are a carnal man. Even if you pray in tongues. That you pray in tongues is not a sign that you are governed by the spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts, how that one time when Philip the evangelist preached the gospel and there were miracles and people got saved. Is that true? When people got saved, he even began to instruct them in the way of the Lord. And then he called on um, um, uh, uh, Peter, Peter and John or Peter and James now, the pillars of the church, to come and get them filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says one of those disciples already born again, when he looked and he saw that Peter was laying hands on people, all of a sudden his flesh came. He said, let me bribe you. And he, he looked at him. He said, what did you say? I thought you went through the counseling class. He said, eh, let me shall bribe you. There was even a man in the Bible called Bar Jesus. Bar what? Bar Jesus. You see, you don't read all those parts. The parts you read, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. Do you know that the issue with many of us as far as our spiritual development is, it's not a complicated issue. It's just our inability to have been taught these truths accurately. That means that it is possible that I am born again. It is possible that I've given my heart to the Lord, but I am ruled. In other words, my impulses in life are by another factor and agency other than the Holy Spirit. Oh yes, that is a possibility. That means a carnal man is a slave to the flesh. What is flesh? Flesh does not just mean body. We see that being interchanged in the Pauline epistle. When Paul begins to write to the church, he uses flesh to mean body like Galatians 2.20. And then he uses flesh to represent the sin nature. So let me define flesh as far as this context is. Flesh is a way of life that is helplessly subject to the appetites. Flesh 
is a way of life that is helplessly subject to the appetites, comma, the lusts, comma, and the desires of the old man. That is the sinful nature. Let me take it again. Flesh is a way of life that is helplessly, notice my choice of words, helplessly subject to the appetites, the lusts, and the desires of the sinful nature. If that is the reality in your Christian experience, then you are walking in the flesh. I don't care whether you are a pastor of one billion members. That means if you study your life sincerely and you find out that you are helplessly subject to the appetites, the lusts, and the desires of the old man, that means the things you used to have lost an appetite for. In fact, to make matters worse, there are certain things we didn't even have appetite for before we got born again. Then when we got born again, we started cultivating a very, very bad desire for those things. Flesh. A way of life that although you are born again, you find out that everywhere you go is controlled by a factor other than the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So you're eating. There is, you are helplessly under the bondage of gluttony. There is no way of escape. That's flesh. You are helplessly under the bondage of immorality. As a guy, you cannot see a lady. You can't even give a lady a good Christian hug and go back fine. You will need to pray for three days and say, what did I do to myself? Some of you, when you are coming for koinonia, you get scared. Oh, this koinonia ladies again. It's not the ladies. You need to hear this. Let me tell you the truth. There are many people who talk and complain about ladies and say, ladies are seducing us. It is true that nudity and all of these things are bad. But can I tell you the truth? Even if those same ladies wear hijab head to toe, the same thing will happen to the guy. What he needs is to pass through the cross experientially. And that's what I'm going to be teaching. The way of life. It's amazing how many of us are truly not led by the Holy Ghost. We are led by impulses. Oh, I give me money. Let me go and buy with one. I, I must buy this type. There is an appetite that is not sponsored from the spirit. Flesh. Carnality. Send me money. I'll be, I'm not doing again. Huh? What kind of relationship is this? Love you can't show. I thought I sent you money last week. Send it again. Flesh. Carnality. Listen to me. Oh, I must buy this. At my level, I should have a, I should have a car. I should have a suit of 200,000 flesh. Sponsored. You have become a victim of certain appetites that are outside of the jurisdiction of the spirit. You have refused to allow him to gain total control. And this is how, this is what has sponsored many messages in the body of Christ. Most of these Solomon messages we preach in the body of Christ are a revelation to a spiritual man that we are still slaves to these things. Hallelujah. A lot of people, when somebody buys a new car, they, they come and you see what they do around the car. Mwah, 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 mwah. Seven prophetic kisses around the car. And you see them do a lot of things. And you are wondering, that is claiming, I guarantee you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, that is flesh at work. Trust me. Trust me. There are people who are praying. There are many of us, if your phone gets missing, your prayer life will suffer for one month to pay the price of the absence of your phone. Flesh. Controlled by an impulse that is not the spirit of God. If they steal your money, your friend, including your friend who was not around, he didn't even know you had the money. You lied to everybody. You didn't have money till they stole it. Where is my money? The friend said, I don't know. He said, all of you must produce it. We will take up this case. How much? 500. <laughs> Yet for one week, 
Say, it's not like, nothing leaves me just like that. I know my right. While you think it's civil right, I'm revealing to you right now that it's not civil right. It's flesh on rampage. Flesh unrestrained. Hallelujah. All kinds of things. A man of God is preaching in a church and he just jumps around and just feels like enjoying himself. And you know, all kinds of stupid things happen in the church. Let me tell you the truth. It's not about age. It's about a position that the spirit keeps you. You can be 60 years and still be a victim of flesh. Are you hearing what I'm saying? A way of life sponsored by factors that are outside of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Flesh. A lifestyle that has determined who you marry. If it's not a rich man, don't even come near me. Because if you come near me, I don't want to tell you we have suffered. And some of our parents have crystallized the warning. They have already told you, see, you too, you are seeing what has happened in this house. You better don't bring anything that puts us in trouble. Yes, mommy. And so while the Holy Ghost is saying, look this way, you are saying, God forbid, back to sender. I know what I want. We have composed songs that we thought came from the throne room. But these songs were a way of spiritualizing the existence of flesh in our lives. Hallelujah. A church member, one week to church service, you are depressed over what to wear on Sunday. You can't pray, you can't fast, you are just wondering, what did I wear three Sundays ago? I think it was green. Kai, I'm sure people must have seen me. Let me not fall my hand. Let me assure you, it's not excellence. This one has, there is a boundary of excellence. It will cross the boundary and it has become flesh. It's not organization. Let's not confuse these things. Flesh at work. Hallelujah. Flesh has made many of us to disown our parents. Your father is a carpenter. You live in a small house. That, but because there is, there is the pride of life. When people come, you just say, mm, this one of just my relatives. He likes disturbing me. This is your real father. You lie that your father is abroad. Till today, nobody has known. You make a mysterious call and say they called you abroad. You are not in any relationship. You told a lie. My boo is abroad. It's not any abroad. It's not anywhere. Come on now. Flesh. Hallelujah. I hope as you are laughing, you are really hearing what God is saying. Because this is a very serious issue. I wonder why you are laughing. It's a very, very serious issue. Flesh. Right. The ultimate sign of carnality. This is where the rubber hits the road now. In the next one minute, you are going to know where you stand. The Lord revealed this directly to me. The ultimate sign of carnality is what I call uncontrolled lust. Period. The ultimate sign that you are a carnal believer is uncontrolled lust. The word lust there doesn't just mean immorality. You can put in bracket desires and appetites. The moment your appetites cannot be controlled, you are a carnal believer. Sex is good. It was put as a blessing, a consummation of marriage. If you cannot wait, you are a carnal believer. Wealth is good. Wealth is great. But if you cannot follow through with the spirit, many people have gone to herbalists because they want to prove a point. Even in our homes, I want to be the first person to build a house. I want to be the first person to marry. I want to be the first. What will we do with the first? What will it do to you? I want to be the first person. God forbid, my younger sister can never look finer than me. Blah, 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 blah. I'll pour acid on your face. Flesh. Flesh. 
Mm. The ultimate sign of carnality is uncontrolled desire. The moment your desires are beyond your control, you are walking in the flesh. Whether you are a pastor. Listen to me. There are many of us, if we are to be sincere with ourselves, there are things that we can control, but there are things we cannot control. The devil cannot throw you with money, but women, ah, he won't even need to try twice. There are certain people the devil cannot throw you with women or money, but anger. Once the devil wants to get you, you can break bottle of minerals and wound somebody, your fellow pastor. I say that's to tell you that the fact that I'm wearing this collar doesn't mean I'm a fool. Spirituality doesn't mean I'm, I will remove my shirt and wound you. Carnality. There are many of us you can control everything aside from movies. Aha. You wake up by four o'clock. You leave food to burn in the kitchen. You are watching movie. When you are about to go, you pause it quickly and you run. The latest movie that comes out, you would rather use the money for a retreat or anything. Just you are fasting. It's true you didn't eat, but you spend the whole time watching movies. I don't care whether it's Jesus of Nazareth, whether it's, it's Lord of the Rings, whether it's whatever. There is an addiction. So when I talk of loss, this affinity is carnality. Carnality. Mm. Let's pray in tongues for one minute. Just pray in tongues and let it just sink down. Tonight you are face to face with destiny. And you will have to make a decision. Oh Lord, I want to rise. There is a height in the spirit that I must attain. There is a height in the spirit. No more pretense. I'm ready to confront my fears. Something is wrong. And whatever it is, I tap into the supply of the spirit. Oh, there is a way out. There is a way out. Hallelujah. John chapter 2. First John. Please let's run. First John chapter 2. Emmanuel, all the world is calling your name. Emmanuel, when you come again. Emmanuel. The church will see your holy face, Emmanuel. When you come to reign, First John chapter two, from verse fifteen. Okay, I thought it was projected. Two verse fifteen. John was a very strange apostle because he encountered God in very strange ways. And John was helping us to manage the predicaments that come with this level in a bid to become true spiritual men. And he had this to say. Everyone read. One to read. Stop. The word world there talks of the social system and all its attractions. And the word love there is not the word agape. It's not the word filio. Agape is the highest form of love God's own kind of love Filio is brotherly love the highest form of earthly love the love between a man and, 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 and a woman and all of that but the word used here is called eros is the word lost don't develop a craving an 
affinity, an uncontrolled desire for this system and all that it has to offer. Are you getting my teaching now? So it's not just talking of love in terms of the same love for God so loved the world. No. The word for God so loved the world is the word agape. Agape. Unconditional love that stems from a heart of purity. But this is not it. Paul is saying love not the world. In other words, I mean, um, John is saying in this system, there are many things that can attract you. An expensive phone, the latest car, latest Wivon, latest suit. There are all kinds of things that you can have affinity for. And, Paul, and, and, and John is saying, if you are not careful, although you are born again, you can begin to develop an uncontrolled affinity. Sometimes you may call it passion, but you may not know when passion graduates into an affinity. When you can kill because of something, when you can compromise your Christian faith because of something, it's no longer passion. It has become eros. Many of us can tell lies for a relationship. You don't care. Many of us can reduce your age for work with civil defense. You are 35, you said you are 24. The bank says minimum 27 years. You were 27 years since. Since. But you said, Kai, I desperately need a job. The world must work. And you went and reduced your age, for instance. I'm not condemning you. But I'm telling you that it's a reality that you must rise beyond. It's amazing. As a lady, you love God, but because you are broke, a married man looks at you and says, beautiful lady. And you want to move, but your mouth responds on its own. Yes, sir. Well done, sir. And your brain is saying, within this course, he says, stay behind. I've been suffering. And the man says, are you free? He says, of course, I'm free. But you are a Christian. Maybe I'm speaking prophetically. Who knows? To someone sitting right here and looking at me. You know where you came from. All was not well from last koinonia till today. There are still mysterious phone numbers. You save this name as grace. You save this name as, as, as mommy. But it doesn't matter. That's how far your Christian experience can go. Once it comes to your desires. There are many of us when we are broke. Everybody knows you are not a Christian again. Even if it is 2,000 that is left. You just want to see money around you. Even if you don't have anything to do. Once you see money you can lie down it and roll. And say thank you Jesus. Even if you don't have anything to do. You are on the way and you find out that all you have is your transport. You will go back and pack more. You just want that security. Errors. An affinity that is satanic. You bought your car. Even the person washing your car, you almost slapped him because of the kind of sponge he was using to wash the car. Use foam. I spent five million on this car. My car. Nebuchadnezzar. He said, I have built myself this kingdom. God said you will become a beast for seven years. So John is saying, love not the world. There are some of us, we don't love the world, but we love what is in it. He said, neither the things that are in this world. Neither the things that are in this world. And this is what the apostle says. If any man has this affinity for the world, the conclusion of the matter is what? The love of the Father. That means if you have eros for this cosmos, that means the agape of God is not at work in you. That means I can see your love for God by how much the things of this world mean nothing to you. Are you seeing it now? The higher and the hotter your love for God gets, the more you know I can lose this. Thank God for this big house. But it can go and I will not die. Many of our parents had stroke the day their car caught fire. How much did they buy the car? 
1.5. They just fell down and got up and there was stroke because the brain was not functioning well. Ah! Some of you, just because you saw your CGPA, five, maybe 1.5 and five carryovers, you went and bought, what's this rat poison? <laughs> You bought rat <laughs> you bought rat poison. There are many of us that our parents are looking at us like investment. The same way you have investment in the bank. That's how they are looking at you. What did you get? 1.5. It's almost like telling the person your investment is going down. And your father says, I will kill you. And you go and buy rat poison. Is that your definition of life? And some of us, our lust has been worsened by the mindsets that our territories bring. Is that true? Once you are 25 years as a lady, they say you are not married, just like that. What is wrong? Are you driving men away and you leave feeling bad? You say, God, see, me, I'm tired of all this mockery. And he say, Lord, give me a man or I die. No, you won't die. God will give you a man, but that or I die, remove it. That was not part of the prayer point the Holy Ghost gave you. That one came as a result of lust. 16. For all that is in this world is categorized into three. Everybody say three. Everything you can desire is categorized into three. What is the first one? The lust, the eros, the affinity that comes by reason of the fact that you have eyes. You see that your, your eyes can be a gateway to chain you. Right? All of a sudden, I'm seeing Ayomi this, um, what they call this thing? Your necklace. And I go and get into fasting. Fasting that was motivated by lust. Oh Lord, let my father know no rest. That hundred thousand must come out. Your parents could afford a simple phone of five thousand. They say manage first. You insulted your mother. When you came, you were saying, Lord, a partner must arise. I don't care from where. And you go to prayer band, prayer department. Benga, I have a problem. There is a particular breakthrough I'm trusting God for. Whereas that breakthrough is phone of 100,000. You have disturbed everybody about that thing. I must get this phone before the end of this month. Because you saw it. If you were blind, that kind of lust will not come. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So the Bible calls it the lust that is sponsored by sight. There are many things. That happened to our Christian life when we saw something. The Bible says when Eve saw that the tree was good, the fruit was good. When she saw. When she saw. When she saw. The Bible said how that um, David was roaming about and he saw. Everybody say he saw. Some of you, the trouble of your life started when you saw. You entered a boutique you should not enter and you saw and you wrote your prayer request based on all the things that you wrote. Shoes of 40,000. Gucci Rush 25,000. As you are not married no, for your everyday life. You have already written your wedding budget. If it doesn't give me 2.5 million who are you? What sort of loss is this? I can't use with one of one five. Me? At my level? No, come on. I'm more than that. Who told you? Who told you you are more than that? I can tell you who told you. The preacher. The lost driven preacher who is obsessed all about suits and shoes and travels abroad. He's the one that told you that kind of news and said you are bigger than that. Shout I'm bigger than that. Say yes. Say do all within your power. By the end of this month you should get out of that realm. Some of you are supposed to be having jeeps and you get up and you dance. And you are happy. You do not know that that is igniting something that may not be accurate. Hallelujah. 
the lust of the eyes. The lust of the flesh, sorry. Okay, we're talking about the eyes. Number two is the lust of the flesh. Now, this flesh talks of your body. Look at me. Let me tell you something. This body you are wearing, if you do not know how to bring this body under control, it will surprise you. Let me tell you some things about the body you don't know. The body does not know how to, to see consequences. It only responds to pleasure. That's why a man at the point where he's driven sexually can sleep with a little girl like this, our baby here. A lady that is his granddaughter. Because at that point, the body does not know how to read consequences. It only knows how to respond to desire. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The lust of the flesh. Samuel saw Eliab and when he looked at him, he was broad chested. And he looked and said, ah no, this is the kind of person. Macho and great. God said, no way. That's not how I judge. There is one smelly boy in the wilderness. That's the one I've anointed. Hallelujah. The lust of the flesh. There are many of us that we are driven by our body. Whatever your body wants, you give it. And by body, I don't just mean immorality. Food. Some of us are gluttons. You eat everything. Even if you don't want to eat it, you want to lie down and touch it. It's within my reach. <laughs> lust of the flesh. Look at me. Let me prove to you that many of us are suffering from loss of the flesh. Go back to your room and see every possession you have. How many of them are you really using? Yet you will never give out any because you think it's good for me. You have 20 suits. You are not a minister of the gospel. You will never give it. The Holy Spirit says so it. You said back to sender because you thought it's a demon spirit. Praise the Lord. Whatever will make my body feel good. There are some of you, you bought your Bible from Jordan Bookstore, 750 naira, yet your perfume is 15,000. Lost of the flesh. Ah, you thought I wouldn't talk about it. Come on now. Yes. If you see a little rash on your hand, you will not just go to Pharmac and treat it. You will deworm yourself. You will take care of yourself. If you are looking and say, Kai, it looks like I'm getting fat, ba. You can pay for 50, as much as 50,000 naira. You can get up and jog. You can pay that price and not complain. Because you want your body to be at its best. Hallelujah. If there is a small boil around your eyes, you go and buy 15,000 naira eyeglass and wear it for two days and take every kind of antibiotic and force that boil while the antibiotic is working you are using hot water go down don't embarrass me go down that's how far you can go for your body but to pray for one hour something brings a weight on you and once you just pray you are finished praying and you found out that it's just it's just 10 minutes and say well that's the most important thing it's not about longevity Is God speaking to someone tonight? The lust of the flesh. I will never, never exalt the quality of my spiritual stature above the comfort of my body. No way. If I eat food of 5,000 naira, that means my spirit man must eat food of 10,000 or 15,000 naira. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some of us to fast... If you are not fasting, you can even stay till 12. And I'm not, do you know that I found out that most of the glutons are the thin people like me? You eat and in the moment you finish, you just ask the other person, you are not eating, bah? You, you'll be looking at it as if you don't like it. You say, take it, say, I eh, know, Kai, I don't like eating this kind of food so much. And you bring it and you'll be playing and gisting and level it there again. Two of you will go somewhere. You ate one bowl of food by three. You added another one before you came for koinonia. 
when you went to branch to your friend's house, you still added something. Right now, you are waiting for me to round up welfare, donut, and zobo. You will buy four. Your friend will beg you, you will still cut from it and eat. Let me tell you, hold on, hold on. Don't laugh. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. It may not be demonic, but it's a weight. It's part of the reasons why you cannot break through in the spirit. Sometimes I sit down and I ask the Lord. I say, Lord, what am I doing to my body that I'm not doing to my spirit? I take care of my body. But many of us, the entire scope of our lives, my body, my body, it must be fresh. Your cream will finish, will be trekking around Zaria by 10, 10 p.m. You must get the cream. They say, hey, just use this Vaseline in the morning before you know. The last time I used Vaseline was when I was 12 years old. You can go that far to keep this body fresh. Listen to me. 10 minutes and your, this body becomes empty. It lies down. I've been in the mortuary a number of times. And brothers and sisters, I saw people who I know were nice people. Fresh skin, handsome guy, beautiful lady. But at that point, the body does not hold any weight. It is the content of your spirit that now matters. You eat spaghetti at the expense of your spiritual growth. You buy anything at the expense of your spiritual growth. I'm not saying don't take care of yourself. But if you allow this body to be the governing factor, you want to go and eat and the Holy Ghost is saying, stay, there's something I want to tell you. That hunger, you can't control it. Carnality, errors, an affinity. You want to buy with one and the Holy Ghost has sold the money. He said, Kai, you want everybody to now, Kukuma say, I don't have money to put another with one. Who cares? Please, is God speaking to someone? And then finally, which is the most dangerous of three of them, is the pride of life. Let me tell you what this means. Pride that comes as a result of accomplishment. It's not called pride. It's called pride that is developed as you walk through life. All of a sudden you found out that without reading you nailed five points. All of a sudden you found out that there are certain things around your life that seems to make you notable. You are exceptionally handsome. You are exceptionally beautiful. You speak exceptionally. All of a sudden you found out that you are the object of envy. Everybody uses you as their reference. Your picture is secretly hidden on their phones. Oh God, make me like X, Y, Z. And like Nebuchadnezzar. You will arise and you will tell yourself, wow, I didn't know that I was this great. And you come to a point where you tell God, Lord, the truth is I have received enough accolades with or without you. I am contented. Pride of life. When you are celebrating your 30 years birthday and you find out that there are three jeeps, you are worth 50 million naira. You are above your contemporaries. You are working in a job that they are giving you 450,000. You laugh larger than life. I have arrived. When I say preacher, God honors you with grace and anointing. The sick are being healed. There is a demonstration of the spirit in your ministry. You never come and struggle. Other men of God are struggling and scrounging. But for you, the heavens are opened. The tendency. It is very difficult to acknowledge God in the face of good things. Because we always want people to see the effort we put to make things happen. Is that true? So I rather say, I did it. God helped me. I built this empire by my hands. My five points, Abba. Even if I close my eyes and I write the exam like this, I will still get five points. My job, I'm the best staff. Even them, they know. If I leave that job now, they are dead. That company is standing because of me. 
the pride of life. I am the youngest in my family, yet everybody bows to me. The firstborn sees me and calls me, sir. That's what Lucifer said. He said, I will arise. I will exalt myself above the stars. When I look at other angels, compared to their light, it's like the sun and the moon. And so I know, everybody knows in heaven, that after the Trinity, I'm next in line. It's not a thing of argument. And so let me just exalt myself. Some of us here looking at me, what will destroy us and stop us from being spiritual is pride. You sit with people after five minutes, you've told them every accomplishment of your life. I was in a meeting on the, the other day and uh, I stretched my hands and 70 people just fell. How many wheelchairs? Is it 10 blind eyes or 12? Seven? We didn't even have time to count. Pride of life. I'm the youngest entrepreneur. I'm a multi-millionaire as you see me like this. It's just that I'm humble. I'm a multi-millionaire. Pride of life. I can't come out. Every man that sees me, they should let me rest. They are all disturbing me. I'm even tired. I don't know what to do again. Say there are other ladies. They should disturb them. Pride of life. We all know where you are going to. Pride of life. Hallelujah. When you believe that you can exist outside of God, it is called pride. When you find it an embarrassment to acknowledge Christ as being the ultimate reason behind your success, it's called pride. There are many people today, by extension, they cannot acknowledge the impact that people have made in their lives. Hallelujah. I know people who were raised and trained by certain spiritual figures in the body of Christ. But now that they have a reason, they say, this is one of the people that contributed in my life. He taught me some things here and there. Here and there. Whereas the foundation of their Christian experience, to acknowledge and say, God used this person. He's such an influence in my life. They feel if I say it, people will feel me too. Now I have sons too in ministry. Pride. Some of us come to a point where we cannot even greet our parents. You can't bend down and greet your parents with dignity and respect. Because your father calls you sir. My father calls me sir. My own biological father. But I will never, until Christ comes, nothing will ever make me look at my father and disrespect him. Even if I'm going for a ministration and there is protocol and I see my mother carrying something on her head, I will leave it and go and pick it up. Let the suit go places. When did you lose your sense of acknowledging God? The Bible says in all your ways, acknowledge. It didn't say talk about him. Acknowledge. You know what it means to acknowledge? If we are to acknowledge our daddy prof here, we are going to say everybody arise let us appreciate and recognize the presence of our daddy and then we will clap and acknowledge him then the program can continue that's what it means to acknowledge god not that in the middle of your life you say stop because you are feeling guilty so okay let's recognize god god thank you let's continue pride it says it's not of the father but it's of the world when you find out that you have extreme craving for pleasure and comfort. When you have extreme craving for material things. Material things means anything. Anything at all. When you have extreme cravings to satisfy the appetites of your body. Be it food. Be it clothes. Be it desires. When you find out that you have extreme cravings for recognition and position. See, there are some of us here that as quiet as we are seated, the way we love position and power, you can kill for it. Including some of us who are ladies. You look humble, but let God join you to a man of God. That's when the true you will come out. Mama. 
I said, sit for mama. The day you see somebody sit down, mama sit. Mama sit. Who are you to sit down on mama seat? There are some people you cannot come and quietly, you are a great man of God, but to come and sit down quietly, no, it won't happen. All hail Apostle Joshua Selman, the man who has raised 25 dead people and cast out demons at will and everybody recognizes him and an entourage comes. Hail Joshua Selman. Many of us, that's our secret desire. That's why you found out that every time you keep seeing yourself anointed in the dream, it has never happened physically. Because God wants to make sure you listen to this message. Hallelujah. Is that true? Many of us, secretly, you crave recognition. Recognize me. You walk together as a group and suffer. When you go somewhere, they say, who did it? You say, I'm the one. Ah. And maybe your own contribution was just critique. You didn't even do anything yet. You say, I'm the one. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, O God. Hallelujah. You must not be embarrassed to acknowledge Christ. See, what I'm teaching you will make you a spiritual man. I am absolutely nothing outside of Christ. I'll give you two keys right now that will transit you to becoming a spiritual man. We're going to pray shortly. To become a spiritual man, the first thing that must happen to you is death to the flesh. Number one, death to the flesh. Romans chapter 13 verse 14. You must die to this way of life that craves to sponsor a desire that is not of God. Romans 13 verse 14. I like all of us to read please. It's projected. Let's hurry up. One to read. And make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust thereafter. Make no provision make no provision do not create an atmosphere for that manner of life to thrive make no provision what does it mean to die to the flesh it means to sustain or rise to a spiritual state where your spirit your soul and your body can effortlessly withstand the pressures, the lusts, and the cravings of the flesh. I'll take it again. To rise to a spiritual state where your spirit, soul, and body can effortlessly withstand the pressures, the lusts, and the cravings of the flesh. Oh, there is such a possibility in the spirit that you can rise. You become a spiritual man when you die to the flesh. That means you can prepare food for me to eat right now. But when the Holy Ghost says it's time to fast, I still sustain the spiritual capacity to turn that plate upside down and say, I wanted to eat it. Oh, I like salad. I like fruit salad, but at the demand of the spirit, without argument, it can go. Hallelujah. Yes. I love my wristwatch, but at the demand of the spirit, it can go. Thank God for the money in my bank account. But if the Lord says, so it, without thinking twice, I can go to the ATM and withdraw it. 
I can be in a lovely relationship. I like the guy. And God says, I'm, I require that relationship as a sacrifice. And you don't say, God, kill me. Just kill me. Hallelujah. There is a lifestyle that you are living. And because of the customized dealing of God, let me tell you something. God works with us differently. On account of certain, the scope of your work with God, he may give you certain extra rules that are not for others. Are you getting my point? Is the personalized dealing of the spirit to position you for the unique place he's taking you. Mm. So there are times that other people, you don't come to my house and find me watch movies. There are few times, few times that I've watched, even I'm talking of Christian movies because it's a sacrifice. I cannot generalize it. It's not a burden on you. But it's a sacrifice that I must take on account of a position that I represent for the body of Christ. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Listen. Part of the benefits of working with the Spirit is He begins to give you instructions that are unique to your dealings with Him. It may not be so for everybody. There are ladies who do not wear trousers. And that came as part of the customized dealings that God gave them because of where he's taking them to. There are ladies who don't even, they, they barely apply makeup. Just very mild, just very basic. Because God has shown them maybe that they are going to become a man of God's wife. And because of that position that they occupy, certain sacrifices, certain lifestyles must be placed on the altar so that it will make them to be perfect complements for that man. And on account of that, the Holy Ghost will draw them into an experiential dealing. Are you learning something now? Hmm. There are certain people God will give you certain things. I don't wear chains. You don't see rings around my hand. I won't criticize someone for wearing chains and all of this. But on account of what I represent and on account of the kind of message and the spiritual paradigm I have been committed to give the body of Christ, I will need to maintain a life of modesty that can minister to all and sundry. Are you understanding what I'm saying? If that does not happen to you, you are still carnal. If the demands of the Spirit of God on you is too heavy for you, you are carnal. Who is God speaking to tonight? Other people can pray for one hour, but because God has called you into a particular ministry, based on you and God, a measure has been drawn that you must at least pray for two to three hours a day without compromise whether it is 30 30 30 minutes there must be a system between you and god that becomes the rule your own unique pathway to spiritual progress any other formula will not work for your spiritual upkeep because god has revealed to you your unique blueprint there are things i do every week i may not advise people to do it you may not sustain the spiritual capacity to do that kind of thing. It may be too much sacrifice. But that is the kind of foundation that can host the kind of anointing he has given me. If you run short of that standard, it will kill you. There is a minimum time of interaction that I must have with the spirit of God in a week. Because I know that if I delve into error, I'm going to confuse too many people. So I thank God for the crowd. I thank God for the apostolic reach. We have over 10,000 plus members on Facebook. I cannot afford to confuse these people. And therefore I wait to make sure that that which comes from the spirit is in sync. And that will require fasting. That will require praying. It may not be like that for you. But that is the building that helps me to carry the anointing. Who is God speaking to tonight? Because there are many of you. God has begun to carve out a map for your spiritual progress. But you have compromised it because you want to be like everybody. Return to the pattern of your building. And you will see yourself rise. There are some of you, the Lord has told you that I will meet with you from 1 a.m. to 3. 
or 1 a.m. to 2. God told you that most of his encounters with you will be in the night. But right now you have God. Sleep has become an idol. Lost of the flesh. You want your body to rest. Ah, it's raining. And every time he comes to that garden of Eden, you are not there. And there are mysteries that he wants to give you. Other people can be strolling on the street and God can say, park your car. But for you, part of the blueprint he gave for your unique, the, the blueprint that will make you a spiritual man. But you have compromised on it because you want to become like everybody. There are some of you, God told you that you must listen to at least one koinonia message every day. It may not be like that for everybody. You have not even had the, the, to buy a hard drive of 15,000. But in, in one week, you have bought clothes, useless things. Tonight, God is asking us to return to the pattern that makes men truly spiritual. Can I tell you something? I submit to you. Many of the things that we do in the body of Christ, this is not how God trained me. This is why when I look at many people, they are surprised that they are not seeing the glory of God. There is a pattern. If you follow the apostolic blueprint, that God gives for building men I guarantee you no matter how weak you are you must become strong there are many of us the grace of your spiritual development is tied you see there are times in the spirit where God would demand you to pray more than usual because there are certain realms you need to access and there are the first hour of that prayer is to contend with the powers and create the portal to hear his voice you have not even started prayer request you are praying in tongues yet and that prayer is aligning your spirit to that frequency of the Holy Ghost where you can begin to hear his voice secrets that make men powerful in this realm let me tell you brothers and sisters there is a path of spiritual progress there is a pathway in the spirit when you find it and follow it you will become powerful indeed it is not a unique thing for for many people there is a price there is a price to be spiritual you see why i talk against some of these messages we preach around i tell you there is a price you want to see the glory of God in your life? Stay on course with the building. You must die to the flesh. Death to the flesh also means attaining a position in your Christian experience. Attaining a position in your Christian experience where you're craving for food, you're craving for bodily satisfaction, you're craving for pleasure, your craving for fame loses its power and its dominion over you. You like food, but it can go. You are a married man. It's a good thing to meet husband and wife. But there are times that you can be able to discipline yourself so that you can access certain things in the spirit. You like going out for picnics. You like visiting friends. You are a social person. But when God places a demand, the moment you hear the headquarters calling at once, every other thing becomes secondary. That's a spiritual man. You have died to the flesh truly. There is a lady you are planning to ask out. You've been planning to ask her. You plan that tonight, after Koinonia, tonight is the night. If you are going to die, you will die. You have already rehearsed. Your friend told you it's, it's okay. What you can say will work for you. But while you are sitting, God says, hold on a bit. Just give two weeks. I need to prepare her to answer you. Say, ha! Ah, how long, oh God? Hope the fast make the heart weary. If you are a spiritual man, your only language is yes, sir. When you become a true man of the spirit. See, these are the uncommon postures that men can have that makes devils to run away from them father if it be thy will let this cup pass over me if it be thy will i don't want to have to go through this separation however not my will that's the language of the spiritual ones oh not my will mm. not my will but your will be done 
if it means me staying without marriage not my will oh god if it means me dropping my degree i know i went to school and i got masters and god says i'm calling you into the ministry not my will you want to go to london and god says no i'm navigating you to all your state you say me or your oh god i'm from the north nevertheless not my will not my will not my will from today i want you to begin to wake up by 12 or 1 just 12 to 1 and sit down in an atmosphere of worship i want to talk to you oh lord based on my work i come back late but i trust you to supply the grace not my will but your will ay, 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 ay. when was the last time you said not my will no it must be my own it is my own my altar is calling you oh god my altar is calling you oh god my sacrifice is calling you it's good to like ladies but if you cannot create a boundary then you are not a spiritual man it's good to like honor receive honor when you are given but brothers and sisters when it does not come it should mean nothing to you you should be able to remove your 50,000 naira suit and drop it and say yes you should be able to roll your wivon in his presence and say Lord I was nothing when you picked me up who is God speaking to today I know you are the hottest lady but how much can you die to the flesh and its appetite must you go and visit the man must you visit him every time every time you go to his house he's sleeping with you and God told you stop it stop it must you go there oh it's just Kaduna is a stone throw that is a sacrifice that you should be able to say Lord for the excellency of my spiritual progress I give it up who is God speaking to? Go and delete all of those things and say, I'm, I'm, it's, it's over. I'm ready to arise. I'm ready to be strong. I'm ready to walk in truth. Let no sacrifice be too much. When you hear his voice, let the call be, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to the fasting. Yes to the prayer. Yes to the discipline. Yes to the sacrifice. Yes to the delay. Yes to the mockery. Yes to the ridicule. Yes to the misunderstanding. I will still go into it. If I know you are with me. Papa Deboye said something. He said if the Lord asked him to leave this work now. And go to another country. That the only thing is that he's going to say Lord will you be with me. If God says yes, he's going to go. I love that song. Oh, oh, oh yes, Lord. We will obey. Help me worship him. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your way. Enough of fighting with the demands of the Holy Ghost. Let me give you the last one. So the first one is death to the flesh. No matter how late tonight we must pray and ask the Lord to end this flesh thing in our lives. Look at me. Anything you cannot give God, it must die in your life. I'm preaching to you. Anything you cannot give God. Anything you cannot give God. I'd like you to scan your life in one minute. And look at what it is that you know. Truly, if God makes a demand, it cannot go. That is the idol that has stopped you from the next level.
Number two, becoming a spiritual man entails walking in the spirit. Galatians chapter 3 from verse 16. The ultimate antidote to conquering the flesh is walking in the spirit. It's not enough to die to the flesh. You must walk. What's that? Galatians 5, not 3, sorry. 5, 16. 5, 16. It says, this I say, then walk in the spirit. And if you truly walk in the spirit, whatever that means, when that happens in your life, it says you shall not what? That means that is the only way walking in the spirit becomes our true biblical recommendation for conquering the loss of the flesh. If you do not walk in the spirit, you will never be a spiritual man. Many people think being spiritual is that you pray. Many people think being spiritual is that you fast. Many people think being spiritual is that you are a man of God or you are a ministry. Or being spiritual is that you look at ladies and run away. Many people be, think being spiritual is that you have been born again for 20 years. No, sir. No, sir. When the flesh still has control over you, when you cannot say no, you are still carnal. You are still carnal. You are still carnal. There are times in your life, God will demand certain things. He plans to give you back. He just wants to help you grow. And in that interim, he will say, give it to me. Abraham, take Isaac. Offer him as a burnt offering. And then at the end, you will find out that the real offering has been kept. God didn't have anything to do. Look at the prophet. God told him to eat cow dung for one year. Have you read your Bible? Animal feces. Mix it and eat for one year God further told him to lie down on one side of the bed one side of the bed for one year these were men who could do anything if there are things you cannot do for God don't criticize men who have given their all are you getting what I'm saying there are some people who can do anything because they've given up Ah, deliverance from worry. Give it up. What does it mean to walk in the spirit? Two things, quickly. Number one, it means to depend on the grace and the power that is supplied by the person of the Holy Spirit. What does it mean to walk in the spirit? Depend on the grace and the power that is supplied by the arrival of the Holy Ghost in your life. When he comes into your life, he comes with grace. This is the true teaching of grace. He comes with an ability, power that can help you. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, if that power is not working in my life, if I were left to just be Joshua Selman, Maybe the children that I will have will be like your luxurious hostel by now. Humanly speaking, I'm a young man. Humanly speaking, all of the encumbrances of youthfulness can find expression. But when you lean on a superior grace, there is an ability of the spirit. I had a scripture years ago. Let me show you that scripture. Jude. Jude 24, I think. Jude 24. It says, Now unto him. Am I right? Please look for it. That's right. Now unto him that is able. Everybody say able. Able. Look at me. The Bible says God is able. That means it is within his power to supply grace. Not that he will do it for you. He will supply the spirit power, the strength, the spiritual impetus, the energy. Now unto him that is able to keep you from masturbation. Keep you from pornography. For real. Keep you from immorality. 
although you have done it all your life but there is one there is a supply that the spirit of god can bring to your life many of you are praying in tongues but you have not experienced the power of the holy spirit the keeping power the staying power the power that can make you look at a lady and say you are such a pretty lady and still go back and sleep sound it's not normal it is of the holy ghost may someone catch a revelation tonight and come out of certain things forever listen my father used to suffer from anger and it affected me while i was growing up i found out that i could be temperous i could just get angry and react very hot tempered and i mean my patience was very short but when i found out that there is a supply of the spirit you've been trying it with willpower this is the teaching that we call the teaching of the law trying to use your biological ability are you getting my point now trying to say joshua selman i am this and that trying to say i will i will not look at ladies ah she is pretty no in jesus name blood of jesus this is the law this is this is trying to use human strength it doesn't work that way because i was how many nude people do you see in our society every day you can you can you can avoid watching pornography you can avoid watching this but what of your lecture what of your workplace are you getting what i'm saying you see a guy that is dressed sagging his trouser and his his boxers his inner waist are already showing and the guy is just moving around and doing all kinds of things there are all kinds of, it's called the mystery of lawlessness so what do you do you die because there are pretty ladies around you what do you do you are working in a department where there are pretty ladies now unto him hallelujah who is able to keep you everybody say he can keep me say it he can keep me oh he can supply the strength yes he can yes he can yes he can if he cannot then we is not qualified to be called lord hallelujah so you can hold on to that phone and look at it and say pornography finally i have found out that it's not about struggling you see the problem is many of us grace preachers we now say, we do not teach this technology of escape but we just say look just as you believe believe meditate on good things which is nice but how do you refuse something that is working inside you it's not just something that is working outside you there is an agency it's called the law of sin and death so even if a little baby that you give birth to suddenly starts looking at people and pointing his hand because there is a law on the other hand now you sit down and you are saying oh the grace of god has appeared to me but you are dying because this spiritual technology was not shown you and then we have people who religiously try to say don't do this don't do that don't do this and the guy says me god forbid whereas he's dying in silence he looks at esther and he's like hey oh god if i don't marry this girl let me die whereas he's claiming he's okay both are wrong one is using human strength and willpower you have been sleeping with ladies all your life i hope you know that these things have memory it's in your mind you used to club you used to drink your mind has recorded what it feels like so is it willpower you used to stop all of a sudden you look at the lady you used to sleep with both of you know and you're already vulnerable you want to use willpower you are joking you are joking you are joking ah but there is a supply they that wait upon the lord he says they shall renew their strength i love the way he put it he said they will mount up mount up it's a realm it's a realm it's a realm 
it's not just about determination. Oh, I will not do this. You will do it. Say, well, depend on the grace and the power that the Holy Ghost brings to your life. You know that He came into your life, but you are yet to explore the provisions that He came with. And you must cry out that He will open you up to those possibilities. Number two, walking in the Spirit entails, and this is most important living under the authority of God's word that means making the word of God the ultimate basis making the word of God the ultimate basis for your judgments for your decisions for your choices walk in the spirit the word of God must become the basis for your decisions for your choices and for your judgments allowing the word of god to rule your thinking to rule your talking to rule your actions every aspect of your life you must allow the word to rule your thinking philippians chapter 4 verse 8 whatsoever things are pure true noble it says think on these things our time is up. Rise up. Let's pray. I want to talking about prayer and fasting and showing us a strategy for studying the word, fellowship with the spirit and the sacrifice of a pure and holy life. We'll just touch that next week before we move on to another topic. Is someone challenged tonight? Lift your voice and begin to pray and say, flesh, you have no power over me. Come on now. Lift your voice, Koinonia. We're out of time. Let's pray. The power of the flesh is broken over my life. The lusts and the appetites, carnality, that which comes as a result of my affinity to this realm is broken. I break materialism from my life. Go ahead and pray. Holy Spirit, I receive a supply. A supply of power a supply of divine energy i refuse to be a slave to the appetites of the flesh i refuse to be a slave hallelujah last prayer point we're out of time. Hallelujah. As we make this last prayer point, please, if this is your first time of worshiping with us in Koinonia, I'd like us to save time so that we can get the bus. I'd like you to just come out and stand here. You can be praying while you come. We're going to pray. Mention all the things that you know still have authority over you and declare that by the power of the Spirit, your authority is lost over my life. Go ahead. While we do that, those worshiping with us for the first time, God bless you as you come. Rabakatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatekatek
We're anointed and when we bless you, you truly are blessed. Stretch your hands, saints of God. Speak, prophesy into their lives. We bless you. Oh, we bless you. From tonight, we bless you with a hunger for prayer, a hunger for the word, a hunger for spiritual things. We declare that your transition to become truly spiritual begins tonight. Every weight, every encumbrance upon your life is broken. Every dominion of the flesh is destroyed in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.